Homeostasis, IGCSE Biology 0610 Welcome back to Crazy IGCSE. For those of you who are new to my channel, Hi, this is Crazy IGCSE, where you can study 7 IGCSE subjects at one place. The subjects include Biology, Physics, English, Mathematics, Business, Economics and Accounts. So here is IGCSE at your fingertips. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment down. Now let's start the topic. So this is the syllabus overview. We'll define the homeostasis term. We'll name and identify the diagram of the skin. We'll describe the maintenance of a constant internal body temperature in humans. Explaining the concept of control by negative feedback. Describing the control of glucose concentration of the blood. Outlining the symptoms and treatment of type 1 diabetes. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal temperature of the body. And it should not be the external. In your definition, you should not write external temperature. You will need to write internal temperature of the body. And it works in a negative feedback mechanism. What happens if homeostasis does not occur? Keeping a constant temperature 37 degrees Celsius helps enzymes to work at optimum rate. Now if it's higher than 37 degrees then the enzymes will denature and keeping a constant amount of water means your cells aren't damaged by absorbing or losing too much water through osmosis. Keeping constant glucose concentration means there is always enough fuel for respiration. Endothermic versus ectothermic. Endothermic means the organisms are able to keep temperatures constant whereas ectothermic means cannot keep temperatures constant and they get the heat within themselves. An example of endothermic is human beings and so ectothermic means cannot keep temperatures constant and they can get heat within themselves and an example is snake. The advantage of being endothermic is the metabolic processes can take place at any external temperature. It does not matter if the te external temperature is cold or hot. The disadvantage of homeostasis is that you have to eat food to get energy and the animals that are ectothermic eat less food than the endothermic. Epidermis so skin is made up of two layers. The top layer is called the epidermis and the lower is called the dermis. Now the cells in the dermis are made in the layer of cells at the base of it. Um, and this is epidermis, not dermis. These cells divide by mitosis. The newly made cells move towards the skin and while they move, they die. And they fill up with a protein known as keratin. The top layer are made up of dead cells. This layer is called the cornified layer. Now the cornified layer protects the soft living cells beneath as it's hard and waterproof. It's always worn away and replaced by newer cells. Some cells in the epidermis contain a dark pigment called melanin. This absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays from sunlight and that damages the living cells in the deep layers of skin. The epidermis is folded inwards forming hair follicles. A hair grows from each follicle and this hair is made up of the keratin. The dermis is made of connective tissue. This tissue has el uh, this is elastic fibers, not electric and collagen, collagen fibers. When a person gets older, the fibers lose its elasticity, elasticity, thus skin becomes loose and wrinkled. It also contains sweat gland. This secretes the sweat, which is a liquid, and sweat is mostly water and a small amounts of salt and urea. It goes up the sweat duct and then out through the sweat pores. It helps in the temperature regulation. Dermis contains blood vessels and nerve endings and they are sensitive to pressure, temperature and more. This helps you be aware about the changes which are occurring in the environment. Underneath the dermis is a layer of fat known as adipose tissue. 
This fatty tissue is made of cells which contain large drops of oil. This insulates your body against any heat loss and acts as an energy reserve. Now this is the diagram of the skin. So the top part is the cornified layer. This is the hair erector muscle. This is the hair. This yellow part is the hair follicle. This is the sweat pore. You see the gap here is the sweat pore. Then this is the sweat gland. This one's the sweat gland. This part is called the epidermis. Whereas this whole entire part is called the dermis. Then this is the neuron. This is the pressure receptor. The shunt vessel. Blood capillary. Fat cells. The venule which is a small vein. And the arteriole which is the small artery. This is the arteriole. So these are the temperature receptors over here. And this is the diagram of the skin. The hypothalamus. This one part of the brain is known as the hypothalamus. It controls the internal temperature in keeping it constant. It contains the temperature receptors that sense temperature of blood running through it. If it is above or below. If it is above or below 37 degrees Celsius, the hypothalamus will send electrical impulses along the nerves to parts of the body which regulate the body temperature. And this over here, the blue part, is the hypothalamus. Now let's see what happens when the body is too cold. The arterioles in the skin constrict. So not much blood flows through them. Capillaries are supplied with less blood from arterioles, so it remains narrow, which is called constriction. The erector muscles contract, which pulls the hair up on end. The upright hairs trap a layer of warm air next to the skin, which insulates it. This normally happens in animals and not really in humans. In humans, it causes goosebumps and it also causes shivering. Shivering. Muscles contract and relax very quickly. This produces heat called shivering. The heat generated in muscles warm the blood and is distributed throughout the body. Metabolism. The speed of chemical reactions such as respiration increases the releasing more heat. Vasoconstriction. The arterioles supply blood capillaries near skin surface becomes narrow. The very little blood flows through them. The blood flows through shunt vessels and deep blank capillaries instead. As these are deep under the skin, beneath the insulating fatty tissue, blood does not lose so much heat into air. When the body is too hot, the arterioles supply capillaries. These, these dilate, bringing more blood to capillaries. More blood is brought to the surface capillaries where it can lose heat. Arterioles supply sweat gland dilates, bringing more blood so gland can make more sweat. The erector muscles relax, so hairs lie flat on the skin and trap less air. Negative feedback. Mechanism which keeps internal body temperature constant when it deteriorates. So if it is more, it makes it to constant and if it is less, again it makes it to constant. Now if the temperature rises, the hypothalamus sends nerve impulses to your skin, which helps in cooling the blood. This responds in sending nerve impulses to your skin, which brings about the actions to help reduce the rate at which the heat is being lost from the blood. At the same time, heat production rate in muscles is increased. Blood glucose concentration. It is important as cells need steady amount of glucose to respire or else they can't release energy they need. Too much glucose isn't good as it causes water to move out for cells into blood by osmosis, leaving cells too little water to carry out metabolic processes. At the same time, islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, they make insulin and glucagon, 
These hormones help liver to control the amount of glucose. Insulin lowers the blood glucose concentration and glucagon increases the blood glucose concentration. Now let's see what are islets of Langerhans. They are a cluster of cells within the pancreas. They are responsible for the production and release of hormones that regulate glucose levels which are insulin and glucagon. Increase in glucose concentration. So if you eat a meal which has a lot of glucose, the concentration in blood increases. The islets of Langerhans, they detect this and secrete insulin which causes the excess glucose to form into glycogen in the liver from the blood. Some of it is used in respiration as well. Glycogen is then stored in liver. If there is a decrease in glucose concentration, pancreas secretes glucagon causing liver to break down the glycogen into glucose and releasing it into the blood. This can occur due to respiration or exercise since it uses glucose. And you should remember that glycogen Glycogen is a polysaccharide form of glucose, whereas glucagon is a hormone, so you should not get confused. Diabetes. When the control of blood glucose concentration does not work, it is called diabetes. It happens due to the death of the insulin, called type 1 diabetes. It attacks the immune system and destroys cells. This normally develops when a person is a young child. When a person eats a carbohydrate meal, the glucose level will stay up, causing hyperglycemia. When there is no glycogen to be broken down, to increase the glucose level, it's called hypoglycemia. You can identify the type 1 diabetes if there is glucose in the urine, as it will not be reabsorbed by the kidney. The symptoms of type 1 diabetes include extreme thirst, tiredness, blurred vision, weight loss, and loss of consciousness. What to do to control diabetes, which is type 1? Monitor the gl blood glucose level, exercise, less carbohydrate meals, which means eat less carbohydrate meals. Thank you very much for watching Crazy IGCSE. This is the end of our topic. Please like and comment. Thank you for watching Crazy IGCSE.